the way we got into this and how we ended up building this plant was we, like uh, most of the other utilities in the state, had been taking power from Vermont Yankee um, since the plant was built. It was about 30 percent of our power supply. Uh, like uh, the municipals uh, and, uh, that were also taking Vermont Yankee, our contract uh, was going to end in 2002. We and our board of directors, who have a, a very active board on, on these issues, um, started looking at uh, what are we going to do. And we started looking a few years ahead of time because we knew it was coming. Our board uh, was very interested in seeing if we could replace uh, our nuclear power with renewables. And so our board, which is, uh, I would say, uh, a progressive from an energy policy point of view, uh, but incredible tightwads from a fiscal point of view, uh, said, we want to go renewables, but we can't spend a whole lot of money on this. How much can we do? That was really, how, how much renewables can, can we get at what price? So our objectives were renewable, um, economic, and predictable price. We got that out of the plant. With all of the concern about uh, climate change and carbon, uh, methane is more than 20 times more potent a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide is. And the stuff going in the landfill as it decomposes is making methane, a lot of it. Um, so a, a modern operating landfill has to collect the methane and has to burn it. Uh, so as the, the landfill is now is filled in in cells and as they fill in a cell, they're constructing the gas collection system and filling in the trash around it. And any landfill has to collect that uh, in order to get their air quality permits and everything else, uh, and they have to burn it. And so if, we're, if, you, if you're not generating electricity, you drive by a landfill like the Moortown landfill until recently, you see a big pipe sticking out of the ground, and especially at night, you see these huge flames. All we're doing uh, to really boil it down is taking that pipe and sticking it in here and doing something useful with the gas first. That's why it's uh, considered renewable. And it's really not a whole lot more complicated uh, than that. We uh, create no additional environmental impact beyond what the landfill is already doing. Um, in burning the stuff, you are creating carbon dioxide, but you're uh, destroying the methane. And so you're going from uh, 22 times uh, the potency of carbon dioxide down to just carbon dioxide. And then we d we're getting um, an economical source of energy uh, that we would have to get from some, some other source um, otherwise. For the co-op, uh, we, we peak at 16 megawatts. Uh, this, in terms of kilowatt hours, in the last 12 months, this generated just over 70% of our um, of our uh, usage. The capacity now uh, with the fifth engine installed is eight megawatts. We're generating today at around 6.2. Uh, we put in the fifth engine uh, even though it'll still be a few years before there's enough gas to run at full capacity of all five engines because we, we knew that we were about to exceed, the gas was about to exceed the capacity of the four engines. Um, and we didn't want to lose the gas. So we're going to start the actual tour by walking around to the corner of the building. Uh, the equipment that's outside, and we're still doing some excavating and modifying around that, is there's two things that happen there. One is uh, the pumps that are creating a vacuum in the landfill that are pulling the gas through the gas collection system. That would have to be happening anyway, because they would need to be flaring the gas. Um, and you'll also see the flare. So we're co-located here with, with the uh, the flare that would be burning the gas if, if, we, if the plant wasn't here or if we had to shut, completely shut down for a while. The pipes sticking out of the ground are the wellheads. Each one of those is a, is a, is a well, it's a pipe that goes down uh, basically to the bottom of the landfill and then they're connected uh, with plumbing uh, and drawing it, drawing it here. Uh, it starts to get treated here and that black pipe over there is, uh, is where it enters the building. The first room we're going into 
is called the chiller and scrubber room, and it's on the little diagram in your brochure. Um, the gas is, um, it's not like burning natural gas or propane, it's only half methane and a whole lot of other junk, so it gets chilled and that helps some of the stuff settle out of the gas. And then the operator and designer of this plant has a, a proprietary chemical system using glycol that, that the gas runs through again and that cleans more stuff out. Then we go into the engine room, which is five uh, big noisy Caterpillar engines. Uh, when you're looking at them, it's an internal combustion, very uh, standard engine uh, that Caterpillar built for other purposes and has adapted to burn this kind of gas. Uh, on the part that's facing us, that's the generator. So you have an internal combustion engine turning a rotor, and that turns the, gen you know, turns the generator, and that generates it. The last room is the switchgear room. That's just a bunch of control panels where we can monitor instantaneously what's happening at each engine, not just the output, uh, but the fluctuations in the gas content and quality and all of that. Uh, on the far end outside is our little substation where we have transformers uh, that step the, uh, the voltage up to transmission level voltage. And then the line that you see overhead there um, is a transmission line that we had to build as part of this project that goes out to Airport Road and runs um, south along by the airport for over seven miles through the middle of Coventry and over to a Velco substation just over the town line in Irisburg. Put your uh, earplugs in.